Welcome to today's Ask the Plan. Happy days to us live video series. Welcome, welcome to all of our live viewers and welcome to our replayers. Thank you for taking the time out today on a very hot, if you live in Maryland, <laughs> very hot day and evening. Taking out the time out of your day to learn a little bit more about how to plan your wedding in 30 days. Hi, Sean. Welcome. So, today, what we're going to do is talk about how to select your wedding party. Your bridesmaids, your groomsmen, your maid of honor, and your best man. So, yesterday, what we talked about was how to after you know how to select your wedding official and apply for your marriage license so all of the things were in place as far as where you were having your venue you had a date and everything's in place so because our fictitious bride and groom <laughs> our fictitious bride and groom Ali and Mike are getting married in 30 days they need to hop on getting certain tasks done as soon as they can. And one that we talked about yesterday was making sure they had a wedding officiant to marry them on October the 5th. Okay, so today is day nine. So we're a week into getting them married down the aisle on October 5th. If you want to um, learn a little bit more about what we talked about yesterday, you can listen to video eight from yesterday. So again, today we're going to talk a little bit about how to select your wedding party. Now it might sound easy, an easy task to perform, but sometimes depending on who you're dealing with and um, how big or large either side of the family is for yourself and your fiance, it can be an emotional and a little stressful task. Okay, so we're just going to give you a few tips for how you can select your wedding party. Now this is what you're going to end up with once you just make that selection. Everyone's going to be having, a, having fun and festive, you guys have just gotten married, but sometimes just getting to that point, which is first selecting all those beautiful faces that are happy for you in your moment on the day of your wedding can be a little stressful if you don't pick or select the right people on your team okay you have to make sure you have the right people on your team all right so the first thing you want to think about okay based on your budget which Lee and Michael have already set at 30,000 how many people do you want in your wedding party okay how many people do you want in your wedding party they have decided on the average um, party of eight. So four bridesmaids and four groomsmen. That's pretty much a standard size of a wedding party. It's an even number. Some people choose three or two. It just depends on how, you know, your circle of friends and family or sisters and brothers in reference to how much, how big or how small you want your ceremony to be so that's totally your choice and then sometimes it has to do with your budget or how much you plan on spending and that part of you know the cost of a wedding because um they decided on eight folks so getting eight folks and that and i just mentioned the bridesmaids and the grooms but if you decide on a flower girl and you decide on ring bear all those standard folks junior bridesmaid junior bride okay don't forget your maid or maiden of honor and your best man that adds up to a lot more people right now you're talking 12 okay um maybe 13 14 people depending on all the different elements that a bridal <clears throat> or wedding party can be composed of so if money is an issue because you're going to have to buy uh thank you gifts for Everyone in your party, they're taking the time, they, they love you, but it's just a small token of appreciation to thank them for being a part of your big day. So you have to buy them a gift. Um, and you also 
have to pay for the rehearsal dinner that they will all participate in. So that adds up, you know, everybody is a plate. <laughs> so those are some of the things you need to consider. How many and how many can be based on budget. So Leah and Michael are going to have the um, standard or the average eight folks in their party four bridesmaids and four groomsmen and they're going to have their uh, maiden of honor and a best man now speaking of maiden of honor and best man we'll talk about them first as far as selecting who that might be that could be your sister brother on either side okay or your best friend from high school you know or someone you grew up with either or works it depends on the relationship but you want to make sure that it's someone that you can depend on it's someone that Whenever you call because you're thinking about, should I go red or yellow? Should I pick this dress or that dress? Can you go with me to try this on? Can you go with me to get it, fit, you know, to get the alterations? On the guy side, we need to go and get these tuxes. We need to go and get the shoes. Have you done it yet? It's, you know, so these guys are trying to get married fairly quickly. So they don't have time for people to dawdle around. They don't have time for people who are going to cause friction and drama and issues their schedules won't allow for it they're out of town and it's hard for them to get to and fro to do what you would you, you need them to do so you want to make sure bottom line that they are dependable they will be there when you need them if you need them to be with you for every appointment to for every decision then make that known and see if they're you know ready for that um it's good for you to just make that expectation known so that they know what to expect and you do too so you won't be disappointed if they don't if they can't meet your expectation so think very hard on that maid of honor and best man position because those are the folks that are going to be the closest to you and be your best help throughout the whole process okay then you have your bridesmaids and your groomsmen. Now, I don't know why, but it's always easy for the guy to pick some guys to be, you know, in his wedding party. He, you know, they're like, okay, I'll get, you know, Pete and James and John, and they just flick the names off and boom, they're done. But when it comes to the woman trying to figure out who she, who she wants in her wedding as a bridesmaid, it can be a little harder task because you have the friends that um, are part of your immediate circle, like right now, then you have the um, friends from high school or friends from another part of your life, maybe five years ago. Then you have your sisters and brothers, you have your first cousins, and you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings if you don't select them, okay? You remember the pieces that we saw earlier, okay? We want that throughout the whole process. You know, we want total involvement. We want raw, raw cheerleaders. <laughs> okay? So, to deal with a bridesmaid or a person that you, that wants to be a part of your party and you couldn't select them for whatever reason. So be very, be very careful who you select and don't take it, you know, don't let it stress you out. Okay, don't let your pick stress you out. Once you select that person, then those they have the same criteria as your maid of honor and your best man. You want them to be, they have a lesser role as far as always needing to be there. If they're there, that's even, that's better because it's less pressure on your maid of honor, but they still need, you wanna be surrounded by helpful, happy, cheerful, I'm for you girl kind of people. I'm for you man, I'm your boy. You wanna be around those kind of people throughout the process. You don't wanna be around negativity, um, people who are wishing it was them and not why you, and not me type people, and, and I'm not saying that to be facetious, but that kind of thing happens. Um, uh, the wedding process can be very joyful, and it also can be very emotional because you can, there's a possibility of dealing with all these different elements outside your wedding party and within 
your wedding party. So be very selective about who you select for your maid of honor, your best man, and on the woman on the uh, bride side, your uh, bridesmaids and your groomsmen. Now, once you make those selections, then the things you need to consider when you're thinking about you know who to select as well is budget their budget okay so you want to make sure that they meet all the criteria I just mentioned they'll be your helpmate you know that if you need them to pick up something go by the you know to Michaels and pick this up they'll be able to do that for you they need to be able to afford the items and everything that a wedding encompasses okay believe it or not I mean you pay you your cost is a lot more than theirs but believe it or not it costs a lot to be in a wedding party okay so you want to make sure that you select someone even though they might be your best friend but are they going through a financial moment at the time where they won't be able to afford the dress when it comes in or the shoes you picked like two hundred dollar shoes you picked a two hundred dollar or maybe a three hundred dollar dress you picked um, jewelry that maybe <clears throat> you're going to purchase well sorry they're gonna purchase not you so can they afford these items the other side of that is when you're selecting the dress the shoes things that they'll have to pay for because typically the bride will pay for the jewelry okay but when you're thinking about those things you need to make sure it's within the budget of your wedding party don't decide on a five hundred or thousand dollar bridesmaid dress and your wedding party are only making you know forty fifty thousand a year that's not being very kind to them and their financial situation and their budget if you you know are forcing them to go in the hole essentially because that's what you're doing if you're asking them to pay for a thousand dollar dress or a five hundred dollar dress that just doesn't work for someone who's only making 40 or 50 thousand so make those considerations as well on your side as well as looking at making sure that they can afford it because someone will be so happy that you ask them to be in their wedding party that they will put aside the fact that they really can't afford it they'll it'll be maybe three months later or it might be a month before your wedding and they'll call you and say I'm sorry girl but I can't do it or I'm sorry man I don't have the money to get the tux out you know it happens and then you, you know, so you have to, if that person is someone you really want to be in there and you know their financial situation, just be ready for a possibility, very small possibility, that they might back out because of financial reasons. Then you'll have to pay, be ready to pay for that dress, those shoes, or whatever it is they need so that they can participate and be a part of your day okay so those are some of the considerations now we talked about how much it costs to be a bridesmaid or a groom in a wedding so I just wanted to go over a couple of things so you can see just how much it costs them so this can be some realistic numbers for you and as well as them because you can talk to them about it um, you, you can you know when you're talking to them and you're putting that um, idea that question in front of them you can give them some realistic numbers so they can be realistic themselves and decide whether they really can afford financially to participate in your wedding so let me show you because you know I'm a I show you okay type person so first I want to show you just how much on the bridesmaid side of things this is from Overwhelm Bride and they've come up with some numbers that'll just kind of um, show you, based on, on all the different categories, how much it costs to be a bridesmaid. And I think these numbers can go up or down depending on the type of uh, wedding it will be and the type of, uh, well, basically what type of wedding it will be, whether it'll be a uh, $15,000 wedding versus a 30000 versus a, you know, fifty sixty thousand dollar wedding okay so total cost for this particular wedding um, for this bride is going to be about nine hundred and twenty dollars and the most uh, uh, what they're spending the most money on 
is hair and makeup, okay, 150. They, the party contribution. And this has to do with anything having to do with the different um, parties that will occur during a typical wedding, like bridal shower and bachelorette party. They may go out of town. With $200, they didn't go anywhere. They didn't go to, to Vegas. They just had something local. But you're talking about gifts and maybe helping out with the party rentals or party favors and decorations. Jury, okay, all the gifts for the different parties, like the bridal shower, and of course the wedding gift to the bride and groom. Alterations for the dress, okay, and this is a typical $200 dress. That could go down, that could be a $100 dress, so it just depends. Um, but alterations are a given. Most of the time you won't find a dress that actually fits, just like the bride nine times out of ten won't find a gown that fits her to the T and she'll have to get alterations. And then of course you have your shoes that can go up or down, you know, $75, $100, okay? Um, at minimum $50 if you got a, you found a good sell, right? And then your mani-pedi. So your hair, makeup, mani-pedi, this will happen towards the end, you know, a week before the wedding. Party contributions, you have to have that, have that ahead of time. Jewelry, that typically is given by the bride. Um, bridesmaids usually don't have to pay for their own jewelry. But gifts, alterations in the dress, that's part of the deal. So I would say expect to spend around $1,000 if you're going to be a bridesmaid in anyone's wedding. You need to just set that aside. And typically, you, you know about it months ahead of time. So you can save a little bit of that every month. If that person really means something to you and you want to be a part of their day, you'll sacrifice and just set aside $25, $50 a month to have that money for all the things that especially will happen towards the end, okay? Hair, makeup, mani-pedi. Shoes are always the last, but you have to have this party contribution stuff in the beginning. Now for Michael and Aaliyah, they will have a bridal shower, okay? Batch, I'm not sure if they have the time for a bachelorette party, but I think they're gonna go ahead and try to do that the week before. You know, they have to have a little celebration with their girls and their guys. So this can be, um, in reference to a 30-day wedding, your wedding party needs to have this money like now, okay? Because a lot of this is going to happen fairly quickly. Now, to compare this against what a bride has to spend and what a groom has to spend, you can see the difference here, okay? The difference in price. So again, a couple of hundred dollars. Now, this, this particular infogra infographic, is I think um, from 2014, so it might be a couple of years old. So I would add about 10% on top of this, okay? Um, <clears throat> prices have gone up a little bit. And again, it's just like the one we showed before, depending on where you live and the economy, this can go up or down 10 or 20%. But the bridesmaid, and the groom pay a, about the same for the dress alterations and the tux. Now, one thing about groomsmen, some of them will rent, not just rent the tux, but some of them have the option to buy them, especially at uh, men's, I think it's men's warehouse that will allow you to actually buy the tux, which is a better investment than renting it, especially if you're the type that goes to different balls and things. Now, you can compare everything else. The grooming, we tend to pay a little bit more for hair and nails. Guys, just go and get a haircut. Real easy, simple. But the other, the party contributions or the gifts, um, you see that women pay a little bit more. They have a little bit more that they go to. The men, they only attend the wedding. They don't go to the bridal shower typically unless it's a um, one for both sides, for men and women. And that's kind of the trend now. And we'll talk about that later, about the different parties that you can have. And then we see for the bachelorette party, um, if it's out of town, there's airfare, hotel and meals. Okay, for Lee and Michael, the, um, <clears throat> well, there will be hotel because most people when they go visit, when they go to the wedding, 
they won't want to drive back okay so at minimum they'll pay hotel costs but most of their family and friends are in the Maryland area so they'll be driving so that'll reduce this uh, amount for them tremendously they have very few folks that will be flying in okay and then of course I always I call this incidentals okay because people don't realize all the other things that you might spend money on like gas and going to different um, wedding related events such as the cake taste tasting go going to help uh, with dress shopping and fittings things like that those are the costs that people forget about but that will increase your cost of participating in a wedding so here's the comparison women are like I said didn't I say about a thousand dollars so this is a little over that because it includes airfare okay and then you for the guy you have a little bit less because of the um, party party piece that they don't have to participate in the festivities the only thing a guy participates in is the bachelor's party but women go to a lot more events. They didn't even include, sometimes people have a brunch before um, or a weekend of events before and after the wedding. So that will increase the cost on both sides. Okay, so this just gives you an idea of how much it costs to be a bridesmaid or a groom in a wedding and it gives you um, an idea of well it gives us a little a few tips on how to select your wedding party whether it's the bridesmaid or groom or your maid of honor or best man now the only thing we didn't talk about are the little people here okay your flower girl your ring bear that's a traditional element of a wedding that is totally optional you don't have to have a flower girl and ring bearer remember the more people you add the more cost to you because you have to give them gifts and you have to feed them for your ceremony so always consider that then you have your optional junior bridesmaid and in this picture we don't have any folks that are bigger than this young lady now junior bride or junior bridesmaid are folks just think of them as kids who are too small I mean sorry too big <laughs> To be a flower girl or a ring bearer okay but you want them in your wedding in some way you want to share the moment and then sometimes the junior bride is the um, bride or the fiance the groom their daughter okay or their son is in the wedding so these are some other elements of folks that will be in your wedding that you have to think about in reference to selecting your main wedding party okay so that's all I have for today. So I hope that you learned a little bit more about what tips, what things you need to, to think about when it comes to selecting your wedding party based on all those folks that I just mentioned, your maid of honor, your best man, your groomsman, and your bridesmaid. And then any other elements of the wedding like the flower girl or ring bearer junior bride or junior bridesmaid are all optional elements of a wedding um, <clears throat> that you can consider as part of your wedding party and the other big piece is just being realistic and seeing just how much it costs for, on, for those folks that you're asking to be in your wedding when you show people numbers that brings realness to a situation so that you can make better judgments or better selections as far as when you're trying to you know come up with a solution for asking someone to be in your wedding or accepting <laughs> to be in someone's wedding so <clears throat> thank you for coming to our video series today on will you stand by my side in our 30 day to us live video series so thanks again and hope to see you tomorrow for our next topic for our 30 day to us live video series bye and have a great night